Today we have a uh, 1964 Schwinn Stingray. 1964 was the first year the Stingray showed up in the catalog. And you had two options. You had a Stingray Deluxe, which would have came with the uh, white wall tires, fenders. And this is the, uh, some people call this the fenderless model. It's the Stingray standard model. So it didn't come with fenders, but it had the uh, non-white wall wheels. Both wheels on the Deluxe and the standard would have been uh, the knobby tires, like you see here. And so this is a 64, so some special features on the 64. One is on the 64 and the 63, your back wheel had 36 spokes, where after 64 they went to 28 spokes. And this is a uh, center stamp wheel, S2 center stamp back wheel, Bendix hub, Bendix brake, the front wheel is a uh, S7. It's also a center stamp. Uh, you got Schwinn stamped on the hub. The uh, the axle uh, when it's taken apart, uh, which I'll show photos of documentation of that at the end of this video. The axle is stamped 64. Uh, the fork is uh, May of 64, which matches the serial number. This is an E4, so this is a May of 64 also. Some other features on the uh, 64, your seat post clamp, the, uh, the bolt has AS on it for Arnold Schwinn. After 64, they started going with just the S, which you'll also see that in the pictures. And then of course the seat, which was most recognized as being a 63 and 64. This is the solo polo style seat, which is different from the, from the traditional seat that you saw from 65 forward. And this has the uh, Persons USA solo polo seat with the with the long crimp square back sissy bar, which was in 64 only. The uh, the 63 would not have been crimped. That's the difference between the 63 and the 64 sissy bar. Uh, of course, you've got the wide butterfly handles handlebars. These are, are wider than than what you see on most traditional Stingrays after 64. Well, 65, I think, had the wide ones also. Uh, so this is a really nice bike. We're gonna look at the mechanical workings on the bike. Um, like I said, at the end of the video, you'll have several photos showing uh, documentation of a couple of small parts. All right, so let's take a look at this front wheel. We'll just give it a little spin. That wheel there, it'll, it'll spin a long time. So we'll just let it spin while we talk a little bit more. The uh, the axle is, the uh, crank is, is also stamped 63, which I believe was probably typical for some 64 year models to end up with the previous year parts. A um, Couple of flaws on the bike. Uh, you've got a little tear here on the seat. You got actually got one on each side and you can see right behind where the vinyl's damaged, you do have some rust on the pan. But the, the overall condition of the seat, to be an original vinyl, is really in pretty good shape. And then you can see this seat, it's still got the, uh, the correct tag. So it's, that's a really nice solo polo seat. Now the, now the bike would have came with a white seat out of the factory, but once it got to the bike shop, these black seats, and they had a leopard print seat, and they had different seats were sold at the Schwinn shop in the, with the uh, accessories. So this would have been one where it got there and whoever purchased it decided that they didn't want the white seat. So they would have opted to change out and go with a black seat. And I added the black grips to match the seat. It had the white grips on it, but the, they were brown, they were yellow, they were in bad shape. So I added black grips just to match the, uh, the black seat. Since the white ones, you couldn't use them anyway. I added the, uh, these are water transfer decals. They came out great. Uh, you can't see any lines on them. They look uh, spectacular. For uh, These water transfer decals have really come out nice. Now the head badge. Uh, so the, as you'll see this head badge, it does not say Chicago on it. That's correct for 63, 64. Now this one, has the trademark R, the small R with the circle around it, is in silver. If you see one in black and it's in mint condition, if that trademark R is black and, uh, 
and the head badge looks really great, and that's because it's a reproduction. But you won't see the reproductions with the silver R on them. Let's see, what else? So we'll look at this back wheel. We'll give this back wheel a spin. You see that front wheel's still going. Nice and smooth. Now this is a really heavy duty wheel. You know, you put 36 spokes on a 20 inch wheel and you got a really stout back wheel. And, uh, it spins great. Uh, everything's been reworked. All the bearings have been redone. Yeah, I'll just stop it and then I'm gonna let it go again. Let's see if the brakes work. All right, we'll let that one spin until it stops. So you got the, the small bracket with the reflector which you saw on here, this is the feature of 64. Uh, the paint does show some loss, it's typical, but it's more of this wear loss. You kind of see it's down to the aluminum base coat, but uh, it's not into the primer except for the places where it's got nicks, where they, where they had falls. And, and all that's been treated, you don't, you're not going to have to treat this like, a, like an egg. This, uh, all this, everything here is well preserved. It's not going anywhere. See that wheel's gonna come, it should come to a nice rocking stop. And uh, when they're in balance correctly, you know, you can have your air valve at the bottom. You know, that's pretty good right there. You see the front wheels coming to its stop. The air valve should end up close to the bottom on that one also. That's, that's a sign of a good working wheel. And we're going to take it down here in just a second. And I'll take it for a short ride. And then, um, oh, while, while it's rocking, I just want to talk about the wheel real quick. So this is a knobby wheel, uh, which is correct. This is a Uniroyal, Uniroyal knobby, which Uniroyal was making tires for uh, Schwinn in the early 60s. So I don't think, this wheel is not original to the bike. This didn't come out of Chicago, but this, this wheel was probably put on, I'm thinking, from the date code 1972. So this was probably the first time the wheel, the back tire was replaced. And uh, so that, that is style correct. Uniroyal would have been a correct vendor for Schwinn. And then the, the front tire here with Vanguard stock, you know, see where the air valve is. That's, that's where you want it at, right around. And this is a West Wind middleweight uh, front front tire and I think the date code on it was also 72 so it looked like the tires were both replaced in, uh, in 72. All right well I'm gonna take it down I'm gonna take it for a spin and uh, hopefully this will give any potential bidders more confidence on uh, what they're getting here and, and like I said make sure you watch the video to the end and you'll, you'll see different additional photos from the ones posted on eBay show documentation of some of the uh, smaller parts but uh, with the date codes. Okay, we're going to take the bike for a short ride. Before I get on it, as, as, as beautiful and as original and rare as that seat is, I just want anybody who buys it to know that seat is uncomfortable. So I don't want anybody to get it and think they're getting this nice comfy seat. It's like, you, it's like you're sitting on a board. But it is original and it does look great and I wouldn't change it. but. I also wouldn't want to ride it 20 miles. So saying that, I'm going to get on it. Take it for a short little spin just so you can kind of see some weight on it. 